truth, justice, and the big sales way. As we always do, we start the program off with big sales. How you doing, everyone? Hopefully, everybody's having a great day. It is a bye week for the Eagles, but it is always an NFL week and a college football week, a sports week, what have you. We, we, we cross all the T's and dot all the I's here. By the way, we're powered by our friends at BetUS. For the next four hours, do me a favor. Make sure you check out our friend's website. Looking for a new betting house during this football season? That is your place, no question. Bye week's going to be a little brutal. For the Philadelphia Eagle fans and the Philadelphia Eagle organization, Um, no doubt. Nick Sirianni's on the hot seat. And today we have 10 candidates to replace him. It's time to start talking this. It's time. I'm sick of it. I'm not. I'm done. I'm done with him. I'm done. I don't care what he did. He'll have to win the Super Bowl to keep his job. He's completely incompetent. I, I, I am not. Going to sit here and not start talking about replacing him. I am coming up with names for you. Who would be the best candidate to replace Nick Sirianni at the end of the year? He's not qualified to be the head football coach any longer. He's not. News of the day. Devontae Adams wants out of Las Vegas, and Las Vegas wants to get rid of him. He's a game-changing player. Guys, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. He's a game-changing player. He goes back to Green Bay. That's a problem. He goes to Dallas. That's a problem. How about this one? He goes to Washington on the other side of Terry McLaurin. They got a better wide receiving cord than the Eagles. They'll be better than the Eagles. Devontae Adams, Terry McLaurin, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown. I think the X factor is the quarterback. I think he's a better arm than Hurts. I don't know if the Raiders want to trade him in the AFC, which means Jets and Chiefs. Here's the issue we have with the Jets. How many years is Aaron Rodgers going to be in New York? Two? One? How many? I mean, if you're Devontae Adams, do you want to go to New York? And do you want to really see what the quarterback is going to be on the other side of Aaron Rodgers? I mean, really? Look at this dumbass here. Sills is mad. Hoss, you're delusional. Somebody wake this guy up. Somebody wake this guy up. He's in an eagle fog, like the fog bowl. Somebody wake that guy up. It is time to think about replacing the biggest loser in Eagle history in the head coach. He says nothing. But look at his record. Records don't define a coach. Championships do. No matter what you say, no matter what Doug is doing, in Jacksonville. It doesn't matter. Doug's four and two in the playoffs in Philly, and he's got a Lombardi trophy. If you're defining coaches by the regular season, Marty Schottenheimer would be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's got 206 wins. This guy's got more wins. He he's got more wins than Chuck Noel. He ain't in. He ain't in. This guy's got more wins than Marv Levy. Marty Schottenheimer. Doesn't matter. It's about championships. By the way, 
How in the world? Hey, let me ask you this. If Doug Peterson had the same record that Nick Siri Liar has, would he be fired? No. Then how come the guy with the better record People want to have him fired. How can a guy with all that success, how can an entire fan base and people around, the pundits in the NFL and all the sports, want him fired? You know why? No one knows what his job is. Hey, it's one thing for Doug to be 0-4. At least he has a job. Nick has no job except getting in the way. That's why his ass is on the hot seat. Imagine that. You've gone to a Super Bowl. You've won an NFC championship. You've been to the playoffs three years in a, in a row. And people want you replaced. Hey, Nick, go make me a sandwich. Hit the like button. It's time to replace this guy. By the way, first quarter poll grades. We have them for you. We have a question between Hertz and the defense. The 10 candidates that I want to replace Nick Sirianni at the end of the year, no matter fucking what, unless he wins the Super Bowl. Fire him. Fire. How many people in here want Nick Sirianni fired at the end of this season? How many people want him fired? Just take a little straw poll here. How many want this guy fired? Tony, gone. Abe, fired. Me, 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 now. I do 100%. Yes. Me, fired. Look at this. Entire fan base. The entire fan base. I agree. Hey. Hey, senor, that's why I brought that up. That's why I brought that up. Everybody in here wants that guy fired. The entire city of Philadelphia be more willing to give Jalen Hurts the bye and give him the pass. And they want to fire Nick. They should. He sucks. Every single person in Philadelphia, every single person that covers the NFL thinks he's horrible. Black Monday last year should have been fired. Absolutely. I've got 10 candidates. Do we start there? Guys, please hit the like button. Nobody in Philadelphia is putting a list up because they're afraid. We are. It's time. It sucks how the way the NFL works. Sirianni's in a tough spot. He has potential, but not putting it together with this team. Coaching Philly. Whether you win or lose, comes with the territory. Derek, amen. You're 100% right. And Derek, by the way, remember something here, okay? He can't spend $200 million on an offense and look like the 2023 Philadelphia Eagles. Do you know why I want him fired? Nothing's changed. It looks the same. It looks the same. And by the way, I come out of that Buccaneer game with this on Jalen Hurts. It's not that you lost the game. It's how you lost it. He looks completely lost. Should a quarterback, how about this, guys? Should a quarterback look completely lost with players not in the huddle? Should they look completely lost? Brock Purdy doesn't look lost. He completely looks lost. I mean, he's lost. I mean, hey, do it again. I get it. You lose players. Okay? I get it. 
But should you look like you don't know what you're doing? Overthrowing passes? Not reading progressions? you got fucking people in the interview room asking the coach, should he be going through his progressions quicker? Well, we're in the fifth year here of his career, fourth year starting. Where are we going? By the way, once again, since he got that bag of money, he has sucked. What's his record since a year ago? What is it? He's 13 and nine. Since he got the bag of money. He's 13 and nine with 27 turnovers in 22 games. What happened? Well, Sills, he'll get better when these I, I, I don't believe that. What happened at the end of last year? He didn't get better. He still was turning the ball over. And he had Devontae and AJ for the last 12 games of the year. What happened? I don't think it matters if those guys are on the field or not. He's not good. But I'm willing to give this guy, you know what? These guys come back. Let's see what's hap let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm going to give you the 10 candidates to replace this bum. Sills, the reason I keep going back to Belly is because she's been on our sidelines when Nick retired. Do you think he was really there for Nick for Nicole? What was he doing in the building last year? I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea what his job is. I have no idea. I put more of the blame on Howie and Jeff. But here's the problem with that. They're not going anywhere. The coaches are the replaceable factor here. Not even Jalen. I put more of the blame on Howie and Jeff. You delayed an inevitable. And now you're going to have to hire a new coach and new coordinator all over again. A wasted year. But, dude, this is what they do. This is what they do. Xander said it. It's the Philly way. It's the Philly way. I'm glad to see everyone in here wants this bum replaced. So happy. You know why? You can't be bullshitted anymore. All head coaching candidates better be mediocre. Otherwise, Howie won't hire them. Howie wants only head coaches who have no power. Then you're never going to get a coach in the building, and you're never going to develop your quarterback. I think Carson Wentz was destroyed here by the Eagles and his own inability to help himself was the ending and was the dirt being thrown on the coffin. But they destroyed him. And now they're destroying Hurts. It's the way they do business. You're destroying another quarterback right in front of your eyes. Even Angelo the other day said it. It sure looks like the same process. No different. Just a different name on the back of the jersey. You are fucking destroying another quarterback. With your revolving door of coordinators and your inability to build a defense to help him. You guys are right about one thing about Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes has a Super Bowl window. Why? Because when they got rid of Tyree Kill, what did they do with the assets? They weren't restructuring wide receiver contracts. They were building their defense with the picks. Who's in a better shape right now? The Miami Dolphins with Tyree Kill? Or the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, and Hill's the best player in the game. 
But still, it's I don't care how good your quarterback is. You can't stop people. You're not going to win. It's still a team game. It's still a team game. As a Bucks fan, I'm loving the gear in the back. DQ, thank you, man. Leroy Salmon right there, my friend. Love my friend. Um, Kansas City drafted and rebuilt the defense and scouted and hit on picks. Dude's just right in Kansas City. Absolutely, man. And what's the one thing you have that Philadelphia will never have? Stability in the coaching staff. Philadelphia hasn't had stability in the coaching staff since Andy Reid. Really. And you had a three-headed horseman in 17. You won the Super Bowl because you had three head coaches. Schwartz, Doug, and Frank. Now you've got herds. How could Jalen Hurts get better? Your quarterback has no chance at getting better. Seals, do you think head coaches and players want to come to Philadelphia? I do not. Um, I do. Sam, you know why? Players are going to get paid. Players are going to get paid. Dude, Philly's not a bad place to play. That's not the problem. And know this. If the general manager trades for you or gives you a bag of money, he's going to do everything in his power to keep you on the roster. James Bradbury is a great example of that. Devin White. Why is he on the team? Why is Devin White still on the Eagle roster? Can you help? Can someone help me? Why is Devin White still on the Eagle roster? What's the point? He's not active. He doesn't play. It's almost like the same bullshit with Rashad Penny last year. Why is he on the football team? Why is that guy on the football team? He doesn't even play special teams. How he paid him. And the owner's money. He doesn't want to cut him. Because it'll make him look bad. Wasted money. This guy is more concerned on how he looks to his owner. Because he doesn't want to be put back in the broom closet. And now you've got Vic Fangio lying for Bryce Huff. He's getting better. Who in the fuck did you end up giving $51 million to? Look at the money. By the way, Gardner Johnson is garbage. He's garbage. Hey, let me put this out there to you too. Darius Slave came out and apologized to Philly fans. Philly fans don't want to hear that. An apology. They want to know why you're the easiest target in one of the easier targets in the National Football League this year when it comes to pass completions. They only want you to go up. You should be apologizing for your play, not because you're sitting around kissing ass with Micah Parsons. Nobody gives a fuck about that. It's, 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 It's water under the bridge here now, dude. You can't walk that back. They know who you are. I run with you. No, you don't. The only reason he did that, Xander is like, well, you know, he's got, hey, I have other interests. Nobody's denying that. But know the room, Captain. Know the room, Captain. That's your captain? Fuck that. I'd have a mutiny on that dude. I'm surprised more people haven't gone up to him and go, what the fuck you doing? We got to play them dudes and that guy. I'm going to fucking do everything I can to run Parsons over. And I don't want to be his butt buddy like you. Well, let's today's NFL. Well, fuck that. 
You need some people that hate people. And only care about winning. Hard to find them guys, I guess, because we're in the new modern age. Right, Cappy? Thanks, Cappy. Hey, Cappy. Who are you going to kiss the ass with next? Jaden Daniels? Hey, Cappy. That's his new name, Cappy Slay. Hey, Cappy. Slay said we don't need to divide. You should have thought that out before you did your dumb bullshit. Hey, dude, your apology means dick to me. I don't care. You're a horrible teammate. There's nothing you could say to reverse this. I don't care. I'm just going to move on. Go play your position and shut the fuck up. Guard somebody. I'm sick of him. He stinks. Old man Slay. Hey, go put some more numbers up. You should make a t-shirt. Xander should make a new t-shirt. Darius Slay with his, with his career numbers. What a loser. What a loser. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Philly, you know I roll with you. <laughs> they don't believe you. They they don't believe you. They don't. I think mainstream media is ignoring the cupcake schedule the Eagles had during their... No, I didn't. You know what's funny, Joe? I told you, you played shitty quarterbacks and you had an easy schedule that year and you had a dynamic veteran... Football team that year. You didn't play anybody. You played Daniel Jones, and you finished up with Christian McCaffrey in the NFC title game. I mean, they were good, too, though. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. They were good in 22. They may have actually had a better team in 22. Wait, I'll take that back. They may have had better talent in 22 than they did in 17, but you weren't a better team. The 17 Philadelphia Eagles are the quintessential example of team leadership. The 17 team would have wiped the floor in coaching and in desire. Better hope it's not hot when you play the 17 team or the 22 team won't show up. The 17 team is not going to allow heat to be a factor. The 22 team makes it as an excuse. Or as John McMullen says, it must be the field. I mean, Brazil, Arizona. How many fields can you not play on? I mean, really. So which is it? The Arizona field? Hurt you in the Super Bowl or the Brazil field where you couldn't get a pass rush? I mean, I'm, I'm, the field? Really? I can't believe I actually hear media people and Philadelphia sports fans use the field as an excuse for the Super Bowl loss for a poor play on defense against the Packers. It's actually pathetic. Right, maniac. The field. Here, here, here's Philly fan of 2024. Well, Hurt sucks because of coordinators and coaching. Um, injuries. Here, what's the new one? Um, you know, it's not the right system for him. How about just shitty play? How about a guy manning up and playing better? John McMullen's right about one thing. It starts with player accountability first. Then you can go through the other bullshit. Field, coaching, Howie, Jeffrey.
Philadelphia is an excuse machine. You got an excuse for everything now. I never thought that. I never thought that. You know, there were cities that you dreamed of talking sports in that didn't tolerate bullshit. Field? You can't really believe that. I, I, I don't believe that that's the majority of the Eagle fans and Philadelphia sports fans that use excuses like that. I, I, I refuse to believe that. I, I refuse to believe that. I'm going to take that back. Sales Kelsey did take a huge load of Hurts. Now gone, he can't handle the additional responsibility. Do you think centers... Handling certain quarterbacks' responsibility handles the growth of developing quarterbacks? Justo, absolutely. No question about it. No question about it. There's an excuse for whenever we win on this show. Is there an excuse? Um, What excuse? For living up to your abilities? That guy wants a pat on the back for for living up to your capabilities. Can I tell you what you have on your football team? Here's here is the here is the image of your team. Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter. Two guys that don't live up to their ability. Eagles don't play up to their ability. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Lately they haven't. In the last 22 games you've lost 13. Is that good Eagle football? Is that championship football? You know what's crazy? This is not opinion. This is who you are. This is who you are. And by the way, it's going to do with me. Because I've been telling you this for four years. This is why I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. It was eventually going to catch up. Even Nick Siri Liar said that this is unsustainable, the turnovers. It's unsustainable. Now it's catching up. That's why you're 13 and 9. And that's why it doesn't look any better. The Eagles are trending down to being next year or a year after a four-win four team like they did a couple of years ago, then they'll build it back up again. Like Jeff Kerr says, here's the Philadelphia Eagle success train. Here, I'll, 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 I'll draw it out for you. Here you go. That's how he success trained. Am I wrong? You had no Super Bowl window after 17. Two years later, you were a four-win team. Two years ago, you were in a Super Bowl. Has it gotten better, or is it still trending down? Get, get this. You know who you have become? Xander, you're too young for this. You're the Atlanta Braves of the 90s. A lot of wins, no titles, but one. That's who you are. You're the Braves. Congratulations. Bobby Cox had a lot of success. You're the Braves. You're the Bobby Cox Braves with Maddox, Smoltz, Glavin, Maddox, and all them guys. Terry Pendleton. You won one title. Yeah, no, you're the Braves. Eagles podcast. Thank you, my friend. Fire Nick with Bye and Let Kellen interim. See what we have. You're the, you're the, by the way, 
Since 2000, you're 17 and 17 in the postseason. I don't know. You're a 500 postseason team in 24 years. Everyone just needs to relax. We are going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, it sure looks it. Mm. Tell you who's trending better. Washington Commanders. Here are my 10 names to replace that bum known as Nick Sirianni. And then what we'll do is we'll pare it down to five and we'll go from there. Fair? Fair. It's a good question here. Will says, Sills, do you believe it's more on the players or coaches? Well, wait a minute now. If you're going to blame the players, you got to blame the guy who put the players in the locker room, don't you? Don't you? You start with the guy who's, he, who's hiring and drafting, don't you? You start there. You can't just go like this. Well, I'm going to draft this guy and sign this guy. And it's up to the coaches to make that bum better. That's not how it works. See, listen, you can look at every single prospect on the planet, but not every guy fits in the scheme that the Eagles want. He's a plug-and-play general manager for a reason, especially on the defense. It's noticeable and it's predictable. That's why you're not really great for any length of time any longer on defense because you don't have any guy with talent evaluation on that side who knows what he's doing. You have no idea what anybody knows what they're doing on defense when it comes to player personnel. Nobody. You can't tell me in the last five years a pro bowler that they've drafted. That's worth a shit in the last five years. If this defense plays like we have been, we are trending downhill. We are too inconsistent at defense. You're too inconsistent at defense and coaching hires. Scheme, why does the scheme stay the same? Howie, it's easier for him to plug and play. Do you notice the scheme stays the same? Desai, Patricia, Vic. Why do you think that is? Believe me, if you hired a brand new defensive coordinator like a Wink Martindale up in Michigan, he, he would come in and completely change the personnel. And that would go against everything in the sandbox of Howie Roseman. Completely go against it. Seals on the Carter and Davis topic. Is your take based on your opinion or is it from conversation with the D-line coach? Does their position coach view them as underachieving or not skilled? Let me write that down so I don't forget. Kimberly, do you think it's any coincidence Bill was in a suit on the sidelines when Foles retired? Now you're being like me, a little bit of conspiracy there, Kimberly. They're underachieving. They're underachieving. I can't believe that they have to coach desire to those two players at defensive tackle. There's not a hunger to be excellent from them too. Jalen Carter played well in New Orleans because they called him a bum. Jalen Carter read his headlines, got a game ball, and he puts up a performance like that, and he's in the tank because he's out of gas. You played at Georgia. I mean, do you understand Athens 
and Tampa, you're talking about probably eight hours in a drive to get to Athens. You you didn't play in that heat when you went to Gainesville or when you went to Ole Miss or LSU? You didn't play in that heat? Either that, you're not in shape mentally and physically. I mean, what was that? How can those two Southern kids inside not be prepared and they played at Georgia? Dude, Georgia's not that far removed from having the same weather conditions as Florida. I know I played in both places. And Jet's right. Jalen Carter's from Florida. I mean, shit, dude. How are you not in shape? How do you know what the heat's going to not be when you're in Tampa? You know the fucking humidity in Tampa. Everyone knows the humidity in Tampa. All right, let's get to these 10 guys here. Guys, please hit the like button here. That's a weak-ass team, man. You're mentally soft. You have no leadership. And Cappy, Cappy Slay sucks as your defensive leader. Come on, Cappy. Seals, we got the tree and Vic Fangio, not the branches, like Patricia or Desai. Shit's the same, completely. Come on, Cappy. Come on, Cappy. The identity of this defense is going to be inconsistency because just like last year, the coordinator wasn't making in-game adjustments in that Tampa game. Absolutely. Come on, Cappy. Ten names to replace that bum Nick Sirianni. Then we'll get it down to five. And then you and I will land on a guy. We hope we can get him. Bill Belichick. Start there. Would he be a good hire? And would that be a hire that Jeffrey Lurie would hire? I say no. He has to surrender. No, 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 guys. Don't say he'll be the hire. You know, let me, let me, let me do this. Got to remember, I want you to use the philosophy of the organization, too, in this hire. Okay? Belichick's the greatest head coach in pro football history. There's no coincidence he coached the two greatest players on both sides of the ball, Lawrence Taylor and Brady. There's no coincidence. I get it. The owner of eight Super Bowl rings. The greatest defensive mind in the history of the NFL. Jason goes only because of Brady. Well, who fucking drafted him, guy? At one time, Bill Belichick had four starting quarterbacks at one time that he drafted out of uh, New England. You make it sound like that guy didn't know what he was doing in personnel. That's a lie. You know, after 25 years, it actually ran out of gas. How many dynasties have ever lasted longer than New England's? None. And Reyes goes, only because of Brady. Who fucking drafted him? Who went to the owner and said this? You know the money that you paid Bledsoe, that $117 million? The year before. I gave him an $18 million signing bonus? Belichick walks up to Kraft and goes, I'm going with the sixth rounder. I'm going with the sixth rounder. Kraft went, what? Then what did Belichick do? He traded him in the division, not the conference. 
the division to Buffalo for draft picks. By the way, let's not forget he went 11 and 5 with a guy named Matt Castle in New England. Matt Castle, who never started it down at USC. He was a backup to Carson Palmer and Matt Leiner. And he was a better quarterback than Matt Leiner. Ask Ed Kratz. He said this on Birds 365. Where do you get Chris Hogan, Amendola, Wes Welker, Edelman, Troy, Troy Brown, Deion Branch? Those are the names he was winning Super Bowls with. Twenty-five years and four shitty ones and six Super Bowls. I'll take that. Yeah, and he drafted Gronk, who had a horrible Arizona career in the second round. Teddy Bruschi, he didn't draft. He was already there under Pete Carroll. He didn't draft Teddy Bruschi. Teddy Bruschi was already in New England. I want Vrabel, but I'm not confident. Even when Nick is gone, they won't bring someone qualified to run the front office as their perfect setup. Hey, no doubt. They want a yes man at head coach. Staff picked by and being loyal to Howie. Absolutely. And Jeffrey. That's why Belichick won't work. He's off the list. He's off the list. He's not a hire for the Eagles. That's like saying he'd fit in in Dallas. Bill wants to road in there with Scott Pioli. You think the owner is going to fire Howie? Absolutely not. If you can't change the, if you cannot change the general manager, Belichick don't want the job. Jeremy Fowler said Belichick after the Sirianni article. The owner would have to fire Roseman. Roseman's not going to be subservient to Bill at 71. That's not happening. If Belichick was 62, this is a different conversation. Master Chief, we are firing that fuck after the year. Um, This is a, it, it doesn't work unless you fire. Ro how many people believe Roseman? If this is a complete train wreck at the end of the year, how many people truly believe the owner will fire Howie Roseman? I do not. I do not believe. No, I don't, Rob. I don't believe they'll clean house. I do not. No way. Why is that? You want to know why? Because how he watches his money. <laughs> Look at this dickhead. This dickhead thinks this is a four-game issue. You can't be any more ridiculous with that take. Howie and Lori have consulted with Belichick before and respect him. Hey, it's one thing to ask a guy an opinion. It's another thing to hire him as the head guy. To take complete control of the roster. Let me ask you this. Do you think Jeffrey Lori and Howie Roseman would sign off on Belichick benching Jalen Hurts? Belichick would bench him for all those turnovers. Do you think that those guys would sign off on that? Say he has one more. If that guy has another turnover play game, then you know what they're going to do? Belichick would, he would bench him. He would bench him. But let me, no. But do you believe Howie and the general manager would bench him? Tony, 
No fucking way. Damn right. Doug Bentz went. And Doug got fired. Bella checks out. Next guy. Ben Johnson, Lions offensive coordinator. Ben Johnson. Um, this fits more the mold. Never a head football coach. They can mold him. He's an offensive savant. Look at what he's done with Jared Goff. Jared Goff was supposed to be a bridge quarterback for the next guy. Instead, he signs a $200 million contract and now makes more than Hurts and looks like one of the best, if not the top two quarterbacks in the NFC. The three best quarterbacks in the NFC right now playing the best is Purdy Goff. And probably Stafford is probably still in the conversation, but he's not playing great because of the injuries. The two best quarterbacks right now in the NFC are Purdy and Golf. (laughs) Right. Maybe Geno. Ben Johnson's quarterback had 100% completion percentage on Monday night. Was offered the Washington Commander's job and turned it down. Jared Goff, I can't believe that he's better than Dak. I can't believe it. Can it possibly be true that Ben Johnson is a better play caller than Sean McVay? Can it be? Because the job that Ben Johnson has done for Jared Goff has come to the tune of $53 million a year. Did you hear what I said? $53 million a year he makes for a quarterback who was supposed to be a bridge quarterback. $53 $53 million. That's what that guy's making now. And by the way, that guy throws for 4,500 yards every year and 30 touchdowns. Every year. I can't believe he's as good as he is. Never saw this. I mean, Jared Goff's statistics are insane since he's been in Detroit. Just insane. I won't even use the McVay years. Jared Goff's stats. Look look, Look at the numbers just in Detroit since he's been in Detroit. And then look at the winning. This is with Ben Johnson. I can't believe he's been in Detroit. He's going on his fourth year. His first year, they were 3-10-1. and one. His next year, they were 9-8. and eight. Am I right to say this in the last? Get this. Who do you think has won more games since the start of the 2023 season? I can't believe what I'm reading here. Man. Jared Goff was 16 and 7 in Detroit in the last two years. Hertz is 13 and 9. Where's your boy? Oh, I didn't get to the stats. Because he is winning. 
66 completion percentage, 67 completion percentage, 4,500 passing yards and 30 touchdowns, 4,600 passing yards and 30 touchdowns. All under Ben Johnson. I'm going to circle this guy. Jared Goff? I like Ben Johnson. Has great mind, but will he be allowed to run his offense? Or will he have to run what the owner wants? Otherwise, they'll ruin him also. It's a great take, Anthony. That's a great take. You're right, because he's going to have options. Unlike Kellen, who was the second option in Philly. You're right. So you're going to put a question mark by that now. Would Ben be able to run his own ship? When Cliff was told he couldn't, he bailed on the contract, the three-year deal the Eagles were going to give him. He bailed on it. And went to Washington. Oh, this is another great take by Jacob. Brad Holmes, the general manager, is a better talent evaluator. I'll tell you one thing about Detroit. They don't miss on draft picks. That Brad Holmes is some talent evaluator. Holy shit, is he great. They have retooled, revamped. Detroit doesn't look the same. It's a funny question now. Where would you rather play, Detroit or Philly? I don't know. That was never an option. Detroit always drafts better, way better. Not always. Not always. When they had Dan Quinn up there or uh, whatever that guy's Brad Quinn, whatever his name was, he stunk. So that's a question mark because he's going to have options. You're going to have to overpay him. If you want Ben Johnson, you'll have to pay him $17 million to be the head coach. Would the owner do that? I don't know. And if you give a guy $17 million, you are not going to not let him run his own ship. Number three, Bobby Slowick. Texans, OC. CJ Stroud is unbelievable. I never saw that coming. He's unbelievable. You have to understand, the reason I never liked the guy, because I never liked anybody out of Ohio State. They've never had a quarterback come out of that program ever. Ever. That was decent. Let alone great. Nobody comes out of Ohio State. They're all bums. They're all bums. Or they look like Justin Fields. I mean, they look like bums. This guy spreads the ball around. He looks progressions over. I mean, hey, can I tell you a secret? Let me tell you the secret to the failures that are going on in Cincinnati right now. Dude, you got rid of Joe Mixon? I don't think there's any coincidence. They don't have any running game up there in Cincinnati. You bring that dude down to Houston now, and plus they have another back down there. What's his name? Tank Dell. They got another guy down there. They run the football. Plus they have Jeremy Tunsil. Dude, I don't think there's any coincidence that they run the football in Houston. I mean, they run it. That guy's a great-looking coordinator here, this Bobby Slowick. So Ben Johnson, Lions OC to replace that bum Sirianni. Bobby Slowick, I got two guys. By the way, I'm going to post this on our Twitter. And I suggest that our Jacob people post this on our Twitter, names to replace Nick Sirianni, our five names that we're going to pare it down to. You want to see people get absolutely upset? Well, we're going to come up with five names. 
and then you're going to pick one from the five. But you guys are going to set the five first. Number four, Joe Brady, Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator. He has done a great job in doing the one thing that Jalen Hurts can't do, protect the football. Josh Allen is protecting the football better since Joe Brady got a hold of him. Remember Joe Brady's pedigree. He was the offensive coordinator at LSU when they had Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and Joe Burrow. He was the OC when they won the national title. This guy knows what he's doing at the quarterback position. Okay? That's someone down their line. Is somebody like Joe Brady. Um... Joe Brady taking over for James Franklin at Penn State. I've heard that. Okay. Kyle says, circle that name. Joe Brady is right up. The type of coordinator Howie and Jeffrey would hire for head coach. And you know what you might do? Let's fantasize for a second. Eagles making a trade to Cincinnati to get Joe Burrow and hook Brady and him back up again in Philly. Coordinators like familiarity with their players and players like familiarity with their quarterbacks, don't they? Daniel Hackett, New York. Make a call to Duke Tobin. Hey, we'll take the contract on. Flexing goes, won't happen. Probably not. But there's a better likelihood it could happen if you had Joe Brady as your head coach. Joe Brady. So we've got Ben Johnson, Bobby Slowick, and Joe, and Joe Brady. By the way, that bum coach is getting fired at the end of the year. Bum coach is getting fired with a winning record in playoffs. And they're still going to fire his fucking ass. You'll fire a guy who won a Super Bowl. You'll fire a guy with his record, too. They don't care. Nick is a guy... Who remember that movie Car Wash? Okay, remember that? Or used cars. He's the dude that sits out in a cheap fucking suit, tries selling you some bullshit. Next guy up. Joe Brady. No, excuse me. Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel's not coming to Philly. Too much of an alpha dog to tell Howie to go fuck himself. You imagine him coming in the room and telling Mike Vrabel, you got to pay Bryce Huff and N'Kobe Dean. Mike Vrabel might pick you up and knock you out. That ain't happening. Mike Vrabel would eat him alive. Elf Roseman would be backhanded. Get the fuck out of my coaching office. Howie Roseman, by the way, ain't sitting in a room with Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel on game plans. That's why those guys can't be hired. When, when I hear Nick say this, it, it infuriates me 
you know, we, we have everybody think about the game plan, you know, how he's in the room with us. And then you're like, what's Howie Roseman doing in a room? I'm putting a game plan together. He doesn't know football. What would he know about situational football? And be, what, what would he possibly know? He's never been a coach. He's never put a game plan together. What would he possibly fucking know? Dude, you got the quicker you get Nick Sirianni out of there, the better. Guys, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Button. Mike Vrabel's out. Bell checks out. Here's a great name. Hit the like button. Thank you guys so much today. Appreciate it. I'm so glad to see everybody's on page today. Every single person in here is on page. Okay? Um, how about this name? Bob, tell me what you think of this name. Todd Munkin. Baltimore Ravens. Coaches Lamar. Jalen style of play. Got him an MVP award. Won 14 games. Now you're going back to Jalen's roots. Todd Munkin. That's the best name. Okay. Todd Munkin. One, two, three, four we have. Got to find one more. How many people believe in here that Nick Sirianni will be fired if the team does make it to the NFC championship game at the end of the year with the amount of investment and the amount of money that they've paid this year for that football team? How many people believe that? Eagles lose the next three games. Would Nick be fired? End of the year. Let's see here. Diego, facts, absolutely. Lamar is way better right now because of the OC, Todd Munkin. He's done, absolutely. Nick will be will be fired regardless. Um, look at all. I'm glad to see that everybody in here. Nick is ripping the team apart. Yes, he would be fired. Better be fired. There's nobody in here that doesn't think he should be fired. Look at look at Twiz. When a playoff game, he'll be retained. That's why they wanted him fired last year after he got annihilated by the Buccaneers. Sure. They're not fucking putting up with that shit again. The quarterback hates him. The quarterback hates him. Jalen Hurts is not going anywhere for three years. That's why he's going to be replaced. The quarterback hates Nick Sirianni. How, hey, how many people in here believe the quarterback hates Nick Sirianni? How many people believe the quarterback, Jalen Hurts, hates Nick Sirianni? He does. Flex and I do. Steve, I do. Charlie, yes. Billy Jacks, yes. Me, yes, I do. Me too. Anthony. Abe goes, I hate him. Here's Bob. Sales. While a new coach is a must, it is a relevant if the GM is the same. I will do the same to Munkin as he did to Nick. Which three organizations run the best draft talent and valuation? Draft talent evaluation. You should add also Bob coaching. 
San Francisco, Kansas City, Green Bay, Philly doesn't do a good job on college personnel. They don't do a good job consistently on coaching. And I'm talking assistants, not just the head guy. Yeah, Charlie, I would think Seattle. They do a nice job in Seattle. Steelers, three coaches in 50-some-odd years. Yep, Steelers. Yep, Steelers. There's a handful of these teams. Baltimore is also in that room, talent evaluating, Nick Casario, um, Ozzie Newsome, player player personnel, coaching hires. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, th th those are probably your best places. I think the Rams have gotten better since um, Les Snead and Kevin Demoff and Sean McVay. I think they do a nice job at personnel. I think the injuries have killed them. Houston is getting better, Tony. It's a great call there, Tony. It's a great call because of Nick Casario down in Houston. Nick was up in New England with Belichick. It's getting better. Talent evaluation and drafting. Um, you know, that's a, a Jeff DeBone. Minnesota, never thought about it, but you think, you know, I mean, not horrible. Not horrible, right? Not horrible. Yes. Not horrible. Buffalo has gotten better. I don't believe they have the right coach in Sean McDermott. I think they do a nice job of talent evaluation. They got the quarterback right. Um, but and 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 you know what? I want to see how the defense is going to play, but they've gotten the Chargers absolutely not. Now, Abe, it'll change. Because here's the thing, Gabe. Abe, they they did a nice job with Tom Telesco. Had a lot of talent on the team. But you can't hire Brand, you can't hire Brandon Staley. You know what I'm saying? You can't hire Mike McCoy. Okay, you I mean, they get the coaching wrong in Los Angeles with the Chargers. Now they got Harbaugh. So we'll see how that goes. But they had Two of the components, right? Talent evaluation, um, contracts, all that. I think Tom did a nice job there. But the hiring of the coach was just not good. Brandon Staley and Mike McCoy? Come on, man. Uh, what's his name? Anthony Lynn? That's not going to work. The lack of foresight... As to what would unfold by bringing Sirianni back is staggering. In truth, they prefer turning all coaching decisions over to Alan Julian. They'd be innovators. Yikes. Absolutely relative. I mean, dude, they're trying to win a championship from the front office. Relative. I appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. How about Shane Steichen? I doubt that Jim Irsay would let him go. Here's a guy that, um, artificial intelligence, thank you. I got it. I, I doubt it. But you never know with the pill popper. Okay. You never know. You never know what the pill popper would do, Jim Irsay. I'm not sure what he would do. He's unpredictable. He would be great for Jalen, but J Shane Sykin gets his quarterback killed. I say that's out. How about Frank Reich? Shit probably passed. I wouldn't mind him as a coordinator, but as a head coach, how about Brian Flores?
turn Miami around. Miami was actually a tougher team with him. Um, I really like Brian Flores. I really do. I like Brian Flores. And he can fix your defense. So as of right now, we have Johnson, Slowick, Brady, and Munkin. Let's pass on Brian Flores. I got two remaining. This one will be a little controversial. John Gruden. If there's a city that could turn his reputation around and that would accept him, it'd be Philly. John Gruden. John Gruden. Guy gets a second chance in Philly, a second chance city. Luke's probably right. John Gruden. That's my pick to be the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. John Gruden. Gruden, Todd Munkin, Joe Brady, Bobby Slowick, Ben Johnson. Remember something, folks. I'm looking to make Jalen the best he can be. And I'm also looking to win games. Let me ask you something. Have the Raiders been the same since he left? Oh, and for the record, if you're worried about perception and shit, the NFL doesn't care about Colin Kaepernick. Why would they care about John Gruden? If they cared about race relations, they'd have brought him back. They didn't care about it. They never, they had every opportunity though. They didn't give a shit whether he was black or white. They knew he was a distraction. They could give a fuck about him. If they cared about that whole situation, they'd have brought him back. A team would have given him a shot. They didn't care. They only care what guy gives me the best chance to win. John Gruden, former assistant coach and offensive coordinator in Philly, too, by the way. And you have a play calling head coach. Well, I'll tell you what, Forrest. John Gruden wins a Super Bowl with Brad Johnson. In my opinion, John Gruden is a little bit better of a coach than Doug Peterson. He's a play-calling head coach. Mike Holmgren tree. Andy Reid tree. The whole thing. Developer of offenses. Drew 
John Gruden. Now this, Dave, is a hell of a take. Gruden too complicated for Hurts. Dave, who said Jalen Hurts would be his quarterback? That guy won fucking ball games with Tim Rattay and Chris Sims. I mean, <laughs> who said that Hurts would be Gruden's quarterback? He won. Yeah, he turned Rich Gannon into an MVP. Brad Johnson wins an M. Wait, Brad Johnson wins the Super Bowl, and Rich Gannon is an MVP. All right. Put your name on the list. You've got all the answers. What the fuck has this got to do with me, dickbag? What's it got to do with me? Holy shit. The idiots that are in here that, I, I, dude, I'm having a conversation with all the people who are trying to get the team into a position where you're heading upwards again and not downwards, which you are. And you're making it about me. What are you doing? Stupid. What are you thinking? <laughs> hey, Batman, go make me a fucking sandwich. M. Reyes goes, you're making me, get this. M. Reyes goes, I'm making him depressed. No, what should make you depressed is when you get a team like the Bucks kick the shit out of you. That's depressing. That's depressing. It's getting the shit kicked out of you. By the Bucks. <laughs> M. Reyes, you got me. <laughs> hey, hey, take a victory lap, one of the very few you possibly can. Okay? Take a victory lap. It's the only time you get to take a victory lap, M. Reyes. Okay? Take your victory lap. He got me. All right, M. Reyes. It's the only time you get a victory lap. Seals Howie, Howie, get out of my office and make me a sandwich. That's a T-shirt, Xander. Howie, get out of my office and go make me a sandwich. <laughs> he gets a victory lap on me. Of all people in here to get a victory lap on me, it's M. Reyes. Kudos to you, guy. Believe me, celebrate it because it won't be... Very many of those merit badges you get. Okay? I can't believe that guy. That guy got me. Him. Mr. Shit Take got me. But we got to be honest here because we're America's honesty broker. Now I'm getting at least two more laps today. No, you're not. No, don't, don't press yourself, kid. Guys, push the like button. By the way, I got to take a time out because I forgot to tell you Mark Holmes is coming in here. And Eagle fans, do me a favor. I'm going to have to switch gears. I can't let this guy get a victory lap like he's going to. Billy 500 is coming in too. Okay? Be prepared. Mark Holmes has been talking on his show. So I'm going to take a time out here because we're going to need our energy. I'm pretty much done watching the Eagles. I'll just come here. And we can recap it for me like Chris Berman. Todd, uh, Tom Jackson, Chris Berman was the best, absolutely. 
Mark Holmes and his cowboy lovers are coming in here. Do me a favor, okay? Yeah, I don't know, Xander, what it's going to be like here. Oh, that's right. Hold on here. Meryl Reese is going to join us. I'm sorry. Way to go. I got my CTEs kicking. Meryl Reese. Hey, for all you Eagle guys, Meryl Reese is next. That's right. We moved Mark and we moved Mark and Philly 500 to 430. That's right. We're going to get Meryl Reese's take. Some of you in here were depressed. You want to be uplifted? Meryl Reese is going to give you his view from the broadcaster's box on what he sees. Absolutely, Philly 007, CTE sells high and working hard right here. Absolutely. Mel Reese, the golden voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, will join us next. Keep it here, National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.